Welcome back to my channel, MGF Customs. My name is Ross, and today I am very excited because finally I am ready to do a full room tour showcasing my collection of all the things I love ranging from Star Wars to Marvel, DC, Halo, anything that I love, you name it, you're about to see it. Now generally of course I'm always customizing Lego minifigures, reviewing the occasional Lego set or vlogging, but unbeknownst to many of you when I'm not doing those things. I also love to collect and I've been collecting since I was seven years old and after going through so many moves in the last decade, I never really reached a point where I felt ready to do a proper room tour video, never really felt fully decked out, but over the last several months, slowly I've gotten there and I am excited to finally share with you what actually only amounts to, I think, half of my collection, if that. The rest is in a storage unit. And for those of you who are like, wow, how do you get all this shit? Well, let me tell you, you, you buy it over the course of a, a long period of time, and it turns out when you get things incrementally over a long period of time, and you don't get rid of things, which is probably not always healthy, and I've gotten rid of a lot more things recently, it tends to build up, and it's great. So, that's it, here we go. It's pouring rain! All right, we're gonna go from left to right. Now understand a lot of this stuff has been collected from five or 10 years ago. Much of it is recent as well, but so much of it is also from back when I was first growing up and first starting out. Beginning with the 40th anniversary Star Wars figures here. That one's actually from the 40th anniversary of the Empire Strikes Back just recently. The 10 inch Funko Baby Yoda, absolutely amazing. Two Lego Mandalorian battle packs with brick arms. Paz Vizsla from the Black Series. Clone War Kodo Bukia maquettes from when my buddy Corey was rooming with me, still holding on to these for him. It's been great to have them in the collection. Some of my first ever sideshow clones. This is very important to me. This is my very first lightsaber that I got with my mom at Target after seeing Revenge of the Sith for the very first time. And I recently got it signed by Hayden Christensen himself at Star Wars Celebration Chicago 2019. Gotta find a phone case or something to protect it in because obviously Sharpie does not last forever, but it was such a privilege to have that happen. For those of you who don't know, I actually discovered Star Wars and how much I loved it because I got a Han Solo in Carbonite Burger King toy from the Revenge of the Sith line. And then when we were finally moving out of the Carolinas and I was beginning to move down to Florida at the age of seven or eight, I found the rarest one of the bunch, Darth Vader, as we were literally leaving the state. And now I actually live in the Carolinas again this is my tribute to classic lego star wars only some of these are actually from my original collection like yoda and the kashyyyk troopers but so many of these i acquired just recently i also have this frame picture from my buddy joe 111 brick reviews this is a repaint of the black series ahsoka I actually gave one of those to ashley Eckstein at celebration orlando then i have a set of sealed figures anakin from the vintage collection and then a ton of clone wars clones this one is actually kind of rare apparently and I've kept those over the years recently acquired that one up here on the second shelf we have my favorite selection of sealed black series figures from the prequel trilogy with Din Djarin over here on the right the carbonized Mandalorian still sealed as well with a random SH figure arts Jango Fett that I don't really like and is just kind of condemned to being on that corner and then I also have the black series Emperor Palpatine that was released last year over here in the corner a really fantastic figure a fun pop of Anakin from Revenge of the Sith as well and then you can just kind of see all of the characters that I have still sealed here in the packaging I mean just some of my favorite figures are along this strip on the far left corner we have three of my favorite characters from Star Wars Anakin Skywalker my favorite character in anything period Commander Bly who still has my favorite clone armor he's a classic to my channel and then Captain Rex of course I think the best black series figure ever made Made. And then this is actually my Ahsoka Tano from Kotobukiya, because I also had it back in the day, but my buddy Corey has the full set. The miscellaneous three and three quarter inch clones are up here protecting the sealed Captain Rex. 
and archive Anakin back there. I like to have some fun with my collection, so Captain Jack Sparrow is dangling from the U-Wing, beginning my original trilogy, Top Shelf. There's so much random original trilogy stuff up here, beginning with Yoda that I got in Miami in 2011. A bunch of mini original trilogy, mini sets from Lego, along with my full collection of Star Wars Rebels Funko Pops. Still one of my favorite Funko Pops of all time right there. The Land Speeder from 2016, I believe, and then just, you can pretty much recognize, I think, a lot of what else is going on on this shelf. Force Awakens uh, 2015, Millennium Falcon, the ATST from 2016. We have the Dagobah set that came out in 2018, I believe. Still love that one. The Rancor, the amazing redesign of the X-Wing that LEGO put out in 2018. Black Series Sand Trooper, one of my first Black Series figures ever. And then I also have all these guys sealed back here from the original Star Wars The Black Series line in 2014 and 15. Really happy that I have some of these sealed. Now coming all the way down from the original trilogy shelf to the very bottom of this Star Wars wall, I have my collection of Black Series Attack of the Clones figures all sealed with the newly acquired Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi, Padme and Mace Windu from 2019, Jango from 2016, Plo Koon and Kit Fisto are also the most recent additions, and then I've got Grand Admiral Thrawn, Darth Revan, I think possibly right next to Captain Rex, my favorite Black Series figure of all time, with Jaina Solo to kind of have a little Legends trio, even though Thrawn is obviously from Rebels. Down on the bottom right, I have this Commander Cody, which is not sealed, but he was really exciting for us, up-and-coming LEGO clone customizers back in 2009, so I repacked him, this random holographic Commander Cody that I have no idea what to do with. Coming down to the bottom, I have this random RC BB-8 my sister got for me in Christmas of 20. 2017. Then back there, I have miscellaneous parts from the Iron Man Hall of Armor, just basically everything else that didn't contribute to the main body of it. In the middle of the room here, this actually used to be my desk. This table is where I used to do everything. I used to have my custom minifigs here, iMac here, paints here, and this is this is where I pretty much did everything, where I finished the Infinity War showcase and did everything since. Various tacks and push pins for painting and hanging up action figures, some random Lego sets here, like the Imperial Dropship. Got to figure out how I can put this up there on the original trilogy shelf, but right now it just doesn't have a place in the world. All my hair pieces and then random miscellaneous heads that are pretty old. And then this is some nail glue, which is actually going to be pretty important for an up and coming tutorial here on the channel. And for those of you that actually caught the first tutorial, you would have seen my index cards that are basically just totally piled up with paint that I use um, for painting. And this is my collection of all of those from like the last two years years I want to say and like I said in that video some of these can get pretty high and it's definitely always confusing every time I show someone one of those for the first time. These are all my mixed paints that are not over at my main desk and anytime I need a specific color I use one of these jars. These are primers which I don't actually use very often anymore for getting started with custom casts, an external hard drive, sculpting tools, and then more jars for mixing paints but of course as you saw right here in the middle We've got the child still sealed in the packaging. I think he just looks so great just like that framed in the little carriage packaging. And then I just got this yesterday at the time of recording this, the 501st Battle Pack from my buddy Ryan who got Lego to make this with his crazy campaign that he started at the end of 2018, I believe. He was actually just here in the area recently and we were checking out some toy stores. And sure enough, one of the toy stores we actually didn't go to eventually did just get these in and I was able to secure one um, two weeks ahead of release. Then I also do have a bunch of unopened poly bags here and I actually like pretty much all of these, especially Revan and the Iron Patriot, Jor-El, Martian Manhunter, the Venator because I'm a Clone Wars buff. Underneath those I have a ton of miscellaneous paint and then all my reels of thread. This is my old printer that I used to print all of my backgrounds on. I don't use it anymore but it served its purpose for a good few years. This is a Clone Wars lunch tray from like season four. 
And listen, man, it may be a lunch tray, but that's pretty sick. On top of the display case, as you can see, I have Ahsoka Tano going up against Vader, recreating their iconic duel from the end of Star Wars Rebels Season 2 on Malachor on a rotating stand, the same rotating stand I sometimes use for my videos. Those are both custom minifigures as well that I did in the past in 2015 and 16. A bank bust of Cad Bane is here, also something I'm hanging on to for Corey from Kessel Run Transmissions, a Funko of Yoda hooded from Battlefront 2 that I just recently got a few days ago as well. These custom painted 332nd, three and three quarter inch custom clones that I made for Corey suicide prevention auctions on eBay. The custom Captain Vaughn and the 332nd Troopers are all due to ship out, but I am very proud of these three and wanted to include them in this video before they have to go. Then back there, I have Anakin's Jedi Starfighter from 2018 the remake of my first ever clone wars set absolutely still love this one coming up from that it's time for my favorite shelf in my whole collection the clone wars tribute shelf beginning with my first few autographs i got the very first times i met matt lanter the voice of anakin skywalker james arnold taylor the voice of obi-wan ashley Eckstein, the voice of ahsoka tano and d baker the voice of all the clones each of these are autographs from the very first time i met them these are actually my only three fx lightsabers and they're all really old so i have darth vader's from 2005 when i went to fao schwartz in new york city not long after first seeing revenge of the sith and falling in love with star wars eventually i would get anakin's lightsaber in like 2012 and then luke skywalker's shortly after that in 2013 there are much better ones now, obviously, but these are still really special to me. Getting started here, though, I have a couple of recent additions from Gentle Giant, starting with their 332nd Trooper, which is just kind of okay, but very yellow. And then as a birthday gift, my friend Corey, he gave me this pre Visla statue, which is just one of my favorite pieces of the collection now. It was just so incredibly kind of him and it's absolutely amazing and it looks amazing on the shelf here. Beneath the 332nd bust, I have a realistic style Anakin mentoring Ahsoka with that custom Firestar toys head with custom painted eyes by me. The Clone Wars printed bricks by X39 Customs. I think he's called Brick Tactical now. Continuing on, we have all of my favorite figures from the Star Wars The Clone Wars line by Hasbro. I absolutely love all of these figures. Hasbro used to make so many so fast at such an efficient pace while the series was running. You do not get this many figures anymore. It's kind of a shame. Star Wars action figure collecting really kind of fell from grace after this line, but I'm really proud to say that I still have my full collection. And thanks to Corey, there are some recent additions. Low Coon, fully articulated. Then back there, I have a used Commander Fox, which I never got before. Padme Amandala, another figure I missed. Then he also sent out Clone Trooper Hardcase in his Phase 1 armor, along with Count Dooku, fully articulated as well, and Bosk. All figures that I actually missed out on when I first was collecting the Clone Wars line and I was growing up with the series, but these figures are all just amazing and stunning and maintain an incredible likeness and incredible accuracies to their on-screen animated appearances. The Star Wars The Clone Wars collection is completely unparalleled and is just absolutely fantastic and I'm so happy I have so many of these including the Delta Squad, the iconic Clone Commando team that we all know and love. They're not actually part of the Clone Wars line but I have them here regardless and then the recently added C-3PO also thanks to Corey, another figure I missed out on in the early days but the final two additions from Corey as well include Jabba the Hutt, an amazing rubber figure that 
I just did not know was this cool in person, but he insisted that I have one and he sent this over. So huge thanks to him for that. And an even bigger thanks to him for another birthday gift he got me, the very rare Clone Wars Season 2 Serapis action figure sealed in the packaging. Another Clone Wars figure I missed out on. Corey has just been so kind and generous filling in the gaps of my Clone Wars collection. And I think it's just been unbelievable and it's been just crazy to have so much of it uh, completed now thanks to him and then up here on the back wall you probably already noticed my original phase one captain rex from sideshow collectibles absolutely love that figure one of the original clone wars sideshow figures if not i think their first ever clone if i'm not mistaken then ahsoka tano commander wolf obi-wan kenobi pre vizsla savage Opress and Commander Colt, all rare Clone Wars figures now still sealed in the packaging. And then we also do have some of my favorite Clone Wars minifigures from Lego. Obviously, this is a very limited selection, but I figured this was a good place for all these guys. A custom Wok Tambor by Astar Bricks, which I might do a video on soon. I have a bunch more minifigures back there, namely Pre Vizsla with the Darksaber, also from Area Light Customs. Trace and Rafa are makeshift minifigures back Back there that I eventually will incorporate into a custom design of the Clone Wars Season 7 poster. Thanks to Corey, I have Brick back here arguing with Ellis. I never actually got Brick until just recently. Again, thanks to him. And then I have three figures of Heavy in his clone training armor. And as you can see, Brick and Ellis are clearly arguing over Domino Squad. Even though they're all just Heavy figures, I think it definitely looks really cool. You probably already noticed the complete set of Clone Wars Funko Pops released in 2018. I got every single one of them and made sure I didn't miss any when they came out. This up here is a custom dark Ahsoka that I made many years ago and just recently repainted the eyes after finding it in storage. This is a custom printed Son of Mortis figure. I have no idea where I got that from. It was some eBay seller back in the day. And then a bunch of mini Clone Wars builds from various advent calendars from over the years. I think those are so cool right next to the Disney Infinity Anakin Obi-Wan and Ahsoka. Then Commander Fox is back there in his corner because f him. And then some of my original business cards from back when I first started on YouTube. And I have some of these from I think 2012 and then eventually 2014 here. These are just classics. And finally for the Clone Wars shelf, the iconic Jedi Master Evan Peel. Moving on up in the world, that was probably the most in-depth I'll go with any of these shelves. I have another shelf dedicated to the prequel trilogy aside from Darth Malgus back there. I've got an old Saga Legends, Obi-Wan Kenobi along with Commander Cody from the Vintage Collection, and then realistic live action Ahsoka Tano also from the Vintage Collection, but this is the recent repack that came out in 2016 or 17, which is the re-release of that one. One. Now, funny story behind all of these vintage collection figures up here. These are all opened and repacked. Everybody aside from Palpatine, Fordo, and the 501st Trooper are all opened and repacked because those packaging cards are just amazing. And as a kid, I knew I was going to want to hang on to them and not ruin them. And I'm so glad I didn't because they are absolutely stunning to display. Going from left to right now, I've got my guy Darth Plagueis, one of my my favorite Star Wars characters of all time from my favorite Star Wars book of all time still sealed then all of my favorite more recent prequel trilogy sets still intact for the most part absolutely love each and every one of these sets and I cannot wait for the UCS gunship this last Star Wars shelf on this side of the wall in the top left corner is kind of my miscellaneous Star Wars shelf so I have a whole corner over here for Star Wars Legends and and I'm really happy I have all of these figures, especially the amazing Captain Fordo from the Vintage Collection line and the General Grievous Kalish figure before he actually became 
Grievous Snoke back there. That's kind of a thing that exists and is still sealed in the box with his throne. UCS, Lego, R2-D2, and BB-8. And then you can pretty much recognize the other Lego sets that are here on the shelf, including the Star Wars Celebration Orlando Exclusive Detention Block Rescue. Really happy I still have this sealed, and I was actually a winner of the lottery to go in and get that set during the event. And the brick-built, buildable K2SO and Gen. General Grievous. I personally really hate the brick built buildable figures, but I think they work really well for the droids, which is why I only have K2 and that amazing General Grievous back there. Some Disney store figures that eventually I got on clearance, including the diecast K2SO and Stormtrooper, both from Rogue One. I've got Force Awakens, Phasma, Kylo Ren, and Rey back there, but you don't really need to see those. I also have some of the 2014, I believe, Black Series, Star Killer, and then those really crappy Captain Rex and Commander Wolf figures that just were not very good and who is back there that's like some random clone trooper. That's a 41st Elite clone trooper. I always forget about him. All the way to the left of the top left corner shelf, I have some Black Series archive figures above the window here, all still sealed as well, including Luke Skywalker, Yoda, Bosk, and IG-88. More over to the left, I have two autographs from the late Peter Mayhew. Obviously, these mean even more to me now. He signed both this original trilogy headshot and a headshot of Chewbacca from Revenge of the Sith back at Star Wars Weekends 2013 when I met him there briefly. This next to the window here is the full, well almost full collection of Halo 5 Guardians figures from McFarlane Toys. I have the rest of the figures I think in my closet but this was their last lineup of figures for the Halo series. They had been doing them since 2007. Unfortunately 343 Industries gave the license over to Mattel after these figures. They just look better than anything Mattel is doing now but I'm happy I was able to get this last lineup of figures from them before unfortunately they were unable to complete the main character rosters of Fireteam of Cyrus and Blue Team from that game. So that about does it for the main back wall featuring some of my favorite Star Wars collectibles I own. Finally, the last piece is a 24 by 36 poster for Revenge of the Sith. For the longest time, that was actually an Infinity War poster there, and it was wildly out of place, but I'm glad I changed that out recently. Moving on to the left wall, you can see I've got quite a bit going on here, but actually only one Star Wars shelf. Starting off with the top shelf, we have the Infinity Gauntlet from Hasbro in 2018. Still absolutely love that thing. Then the Dark Knight trilogy. Trilogy Cowl. This bust is quite a huge piece of the collection, quite literally um, and figuratively, because it's just kind of like my main tribute piece to that set of films. And then I have a couple little miniatures of the Tumblr, um, the Bane Tumblr, and finally the Bat. Over here, continuing my Dark Knight Trilogy tribute section, I have the Hot Toys figures of Batman and Bane from The Dark Knight Rises. Also from The Dark Knight Rises, Catwoman by Play Arts Kai. Behind them, a bunch of Movie Masters figures still sealed from 2012. Batman, Bane, Selina, and then Raz Al Ghul. Along with the Lego UCS Tumblr, still one of my favorite sets of all time. No idea where I got these. Got Superman and General Zod fighting here from the Battle of Metropolis, just kind of randomly there. And then over here on the right, I have Master Chief and Spartan Locke from the Halo 5 Guardians Collector's Edition. Really was not a fan of that game at all. Uh, however, I will say this collector's piece is absolutely fantastic and it does actually split in two. This next shelf starts off as a Star Wars shelf with the Black Series Stormtrooper helmet from 2016 and then slowly starts to become a Marvel shelf with the UCS Hulkbuster from 2018. 2015 Age of Ultron Hulkbuster just beneath it. I have these concept art pieces from when I got the Hulkbuster at the Lego store in 2018 still behind it. The Iron Man 3 art book is hanging out back there along with a makeshift Heath Ledger Joker quite literally hanging from the tumbler just like Jack Sparrow earlier in the video. Then we have the Black Widow helicopter set thing. Guardians, Funko Pops going from here um, all the way up to Thanos from Infinity War back there. And then more Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 Funko Pops 
over here as well. I, I really regret buying those. I got to be honest with you. However, I have the Tron Legacy Light Cycle set from 2018. Absolutely love this set. It's just amazing. And I've got that Tron looking Batman on top of the regular blue light cycle from, uh, I think, one of those books where you got a figure. I forget what it's from. You guys probably know. And then also I have the Avengers Infinity War sets. This was an absolutely amazing line for me to review back in 2018. It really was just a great time and I got these so early at a Target about an hour away from me after vigorous hunting. Deadpool is hanging out up there on the top of the Sanctum Sanctorum and then this is actually a knockoff Thanos and not the official Lego one. I just still think the official Lego one is just so horrendous um, as I compared it to my original custom of Thanos from Infinity War in that comparison video I did back in 2018 and so rightfully so i removed it from the collection and placed this knockoff here instead moving captain rex out of the way though so we can get a better look at the third shelf the main Marvel shelf. You can see I've got my full Iron Man Hall of Armor that I did a video on back in 2019 with all those knockoff suits. Still absolutely love how that looks and it only continues with the Avengers Endgame line. You have the War Machine Hulkbuster, the Ultimate Quinjet, all the Avengers in their quantum time suits along with a knockoff of the Hulk in his. Then I've got Captain Marvel over here with Avengers HQ. A random knockoff of Sam Wilson cap with an official Lego Falcon head is on top of Avengers HQ with a knockoff of Jane Foster Thor. Then I also have even more Marvel sets from 2018 and 19 moving over to the right here with a full team of knockoff Dora Milaje figures and a knockoff of Shuri with custom painted eyes by me. Love that figure set. They all have double-sided faces on the back though, so I gotta admit it's, uh, it, it's kind of disturbing. And then I have the Avengers 2012 team over here kind of incomplete because I'm kind of misplaced my Iron Man Mark 7 from back in the day so it's not totally finished yet but I'm hoping to get another Mark 7 at some point in the future. Then I have the full trio of Spider-Man Homecoming sets back here just an amazing line of Lego sets that they put out in 2019. Still love all three of these with my own custom little John Favreau back there. Happy Hogan the forehead of security there protecting the Stark jet and on the corner my custom Stan Lee and on the back of the Marvel shelf I have some miscellaneous Marvel Legends figures from Black Panther, Captain Marvel and Spider-Man Far From Home. I should probably reorient these and put the Far From Home figures over here. My last dedicated Star Wars shelf for this room includes the uh, AT, whatever Walker from The Last Jedi. I have the TIE Fighter from The Force Awakens. I think you get the idea. Clone Wars Spider Droid. That was my second ever Clone Wars set right there. Oh my god, the history of the channel. Back when Commander Fox was cool in 2008. Umbaran MHC with custom Umbarans I did in 2012 for a mock that never happened. Senate Commandos, T6 Shuttle, and then I've got a random Clone Wars Cad Bane figure standing off against a Soka in her spacesuit from the season two holocron heist story arc and that's actually provided as well from Corey at kessel run transmissions and then the clone wars y-wing an absolutely fantastic set that i'm so glad i still have intact then back here are just miscellaneous funko pops that i intend to keep for now including some new additions a couple more additions from Corey of kessel run transmissions he sent over the heavy infantry mandalorian the death watch mandalorian and then i got uh, the mando there with the child but I'm severely cutting down on my Funko Pop collecting. Finally this bottom shelf includes my complete well almost complete DVD collection with a random copy of Christopher Robin. I have no idea what happened to the case for this one. Over on the right here I have the Black Series. I have honestly no idea what this was for but this was the Luke Skywalker they released last year with a ton of accessories. It was a fantastic fantastic figure that I managed to actually get with Corey while he was rooming with me at the local GameStop here. And speaking of Corey yet again, this is actually his lightsaber that was gifted to him by Jason from yakface.com. This is a custom Ahsoka lightsaber hilt that he made that is also just hanging out here for now until Corey is ready for me to ship it back to him. And then also I have some miscellaneous Black Series figures on the edge here. The Black Series Darth Vader, which is an absolutely 
stunning figure. One of the best Black Series figures of all time. I only have the best ones out on display outside the packaging. This is my first ever Black Series figure right here on the left. Luke Skywalker from the 2014 First Wave and Rey from the Rise of Skywalker. Ironically, the best Rey collectible I think that is out there that really nails Daisy Ridley's likeness. And finally, a couple more random figures from Revenge of the Sith over here on the left that I didn't know what to do with. I've got this 31 inch Darth Vader that I pulled out of storage recently, along with another 31 inch figure, the Shock Trooper from Revenge of the Sith. But back over here, going up next to Darth Vader, in between my mom's summer or spring decorations are all my framed photo ops from Star Wars Celebration Orlando, beginning with Hayden Christensen and then Mark Hamill, which was equally insane followed by Felicity Jones, Alan Tudyk, Ian McDermott, Tamira Morrison which was really crazy after starting my whole channel making custom Lego clones. Walking up to him was just a surreal experience and Billy D. Williams not to mention all the wristbands I wore for the three major panels I attended at Orlando with my friends, the 40th anniversary panel, Star Wars The Last Jedi's first teaser trailer reveal panel, and the closing ceremonies, the 40th anniversary panel with George Lucas and the cast from both the prequels and the original trilogy, John Williams plus Billy Lord. It was just one of the best, if not the best experience of my life. And moving Captain Rex a little more to the right, Commander Rex. Now, I have my box of Clone Wars figures. Literally, my entire collection of Hasbro Clone Wars figures that are not on the shelf you already saw are all in this box. Again, with more and more contributions from Corey of Kessler Run Transmissions. And then also all my Clone Wars clones that go with the collection as well. These boxes do kind of look like a junk pile, but believe it or not, all of this stuff does serve a purpose. Beginning with my old TV that is no longer installed in the wall here. And then we also have have a bunch of boxes in case I want to pack anything up. All of my Xbox 360 games are in here. Underneath it is what I call my nostalgia box. Basically anything from my childhood that I found or that was meaningful to me is in this box. And you can see I have the actual original box of my first homing spider droid from 2008. And then just all kinds of stuff. One of my first Darth Vader masks, a bag from Brick Fair, graduation caps, my first ever Build-A-Bear plush, pamphlets from Star Wars Week weekends a freaking bob the builder figure one of the greatest games of all time spongebob squarepants employee of the month one of the hats i used to wear when i first started making customs some playstation 2 games some of my original journals are even in here from when i first discovered star wars it's pretty wild this is from when i got my first ever yoda and mace windu action figures i've got a glorious portrait of darth vader i want to get a vos chager c3po from when i got my first c -3PO. 3PO figure and I, I getting a Quia Gon Jin. Man, I was catching up on my Phantom Menace figures. In conclusion, I think Lego Star Wars is fun. I asked my friend Nathan to come over to my house and help me beat Lego Star Wars the video game. Boy, did he. He even helped me earn money, Lego studs, on other levels to buy invincibility. That makes you never die. The Revenge of the Sith official game guide? Hell yeah. Who is that? Guys, I've been looking for this bag of clear bricks for three years. The Clone Walker Battle Pack, ladies and gentlemen. Did you know I had about over 100 of these? back in 2009 and 10. Back when I used to accept making Sharpie clones for $5, I would like a custom Episode 3 sniper in Star Wars Battlefront 2. It's a clone sharpshooter, please. P.S. How do you... Uh... Uh... I can't read. This is the computer that I first played Halo on. It's it's practically like a toy. The Spider-Man 3 novelization. I actually still like a lot of that movie. I wonder how this book is. There is so much gold in here. A decaled clone from JPO 97 Studios. Oh my God. I've got my original printed shirts that I took to Brick Fair 2011. My second ever Brick Fair. These were amazing. Here we go. MGF from YouTube. Come on, man. This is gold. Finally for the main room, that brings us to my gaming setup. As you can see, finally after not having a good TV since like 2012 for The Last of Us Part 2, I decided to finally pick one up and I think it was definitely the right move. Even though it was a week or two after launch, it wound up not really mattering because The Last of Us 2 fully corrupted my PS4 down to its root code. So I had to send it in for repair to Sony. I 
just got it back. There's the game right there. And thankfully, my friend Corey was generous and kind enough to literally send me his PS4 just so I could experience the game and we could talk about it because he had already seen a playthrough. Corey is just an all-around great guy. Moving on, underneath there as well is my Xbox One. My Xboxes have never failed me, thankfully, so at least there's that. Then I've got a vinyl ghost from Destiny 2, the Master Chief Collection right there, and right next to my TV, for the entirety of my Last of Us Part 2 playthrough, I have Joel and Ellie, my original Last of Us minifigures from 2013, along with Master Chief from Halo 5 Guardians 2016, and a makeshift Benjamin Jero, the reporter from the Halo Hunt the Truth audio series. And I'm showing this to you, even though none of you know who this is, because this is the torso I painted for my very first tutorial that recently went up on the channel. We're moving on up in the world, though, to the gaming collection, beginning with a couple of Funko Pops from Halo, Chief and Arby, plus Darth Revan and Darth Malak, recently acquired from GameStop, and my favorite trio from the original Modern Warfare trilogy. Right next to them is one of my favorite pieces, a custom. Lego Halo Hunter with my original Halo the Master Chief collection Master Chief custom from 2014 look at that painted rocket launcher from Brick Arms with actual aluminum coils absolutely love this corner piece as the fuel rod cannon laser falls off. The second shelf has a row of Funko Pops behind all of these collectibles, including Spidey PS4, Nathan Drake, Zavala from Destiny, and a couple Fallout uh, power armor suits. Of course, I could give you an overview of all of this stuff, but I think it's just cooler to kind of mention some things as I go along here. This is the original Steve figure Lego took to Minecon 2013, which is really cool. And uh, then over here, we've got Profit from the Crisis franchise, if you didn't know, along with the Halo 4 soundtrack track which is wildly underrated. Speaking of Minecon 2013, got the lanyards my dad and I wore when we went to the event. I will never forget being able to go to Minecon. I have the McFarlane Zavala figure from Destiny 2. Found that on clearance. Plus the Spider-Man PS4 Marvel Legends figure. Moving back up top, we've got Shea Cormac from Assassin's Creed Rogue. Plus Master Chief from Halo 4. A signed picture of Starkiller that I got from Sam Witwer when I first met him at Star Wars Weekends 2013 and then a Halo Elite Zealot from Halo 4. Plus, we've got Jacob Fry. Never actually played. Assassin's Creed Syndicate, I watched a playthrough. Second Sister from the Black Series for Jedi Fallen Order. And then down here, we've got the Inferno Squad Agent, which is not at all accurate to any one of those three squad members. But we also do have the Imperial Shock Trooper that was released to GameStop back in 2015 for the release of Battlefront 2015. Finally, that brings us to the floor. And you can see I've got an unbuilt Stranger Things upside down from last year that I never got around to putting together. The Twilight that Corey also sent to me for my birthday. One of the only original Clone Wars 2008 sets I never got. So again, just crazy generous. Huge thanks to him. The Hot Toys Thanos packaging because it's absolutely stunning. And I'm using both these things to cover up some destroyed Clone Wars sets that make me really sad. I have to fix my Republic Dropship with ATO too. That's my favorite Lego set of all time. I can't believe I let that crumble over the years through all the moves. But then I got a couple boxes that are still left here from Corey from when he was here rooming with me. And then the Ultimate Collector Series Millennium Falcon. There it is, the UCS Falcon still in its box. Once I've got it built, I'm gonna put it right on that table. However, this is just something that I know is going to take so long and something that I really want to be able to commit to when I'm ready to build it. And uh, so far, that time has yet to come. Back behind the Falcon and Ahsoka, though, I've got the box for basically any bit of tech that I've purchased over the last several years or even some dating back as far as 2013. Any microphone or console or iPhone, all the boxes are back there. Even Spiro BB-8 is uh, back here. Remember when this was cool in 2015? Okay, that's it for the main collection room. Are you still with me? I hope so. I know this is a long room tour, but this has been so many years of collecting right here, and this is by far the best setup that I've ever had for my favorite parts of my collection, and this has just been a couple years of slowly cultivating this setup, slowly uh, making incremental changes and attending to it before ultimately I reached this point and was ready to do this video, and I am super proud of how all of this looks. Now this is my room.
To start, this is my desk where all of the magic happens, all of the customizing, and all of the editing. This is a new chair that I got, which is pretty nice. It's already started making noises though after just a couple weeks, which is making me sad. However, my desk is what I and some of my friends know as my portable desk. This has been the model set up for my desk since like as far back as I can remember, maybe 2012. Computer in the center, it used to be my iMac, and then paints on the right, lamp right there, and then everything else custom minifigure related over here on the left. However, this setup has been pretty whack because I'm not really supposed to have a desk right here. This is supposed to be walking space and it was walking space for the first year and a half living here, but eventually to concentrate and focus, I had to move in here. And uh, it's been troublesome though, because this is my bed, as you can see, uh, it's, it's, it's a great bed, but I'm kicking paints off the side of my desk practically every night. To run you through some of this, these are the index cards that I build paint on that you might've seen in the first tutorial, all my paint brushes that I use for various purposes and all of the paints that I'm currently using on a regular basis, all set up right here. This is actually my my new MacBook Pro that I got this year because unfortunately my iMac finally died after nine years and it is no longer worth it to repair this thing and so I just use it for backgrounds now and hope that it doesn't crash and I, I should probably get rid of it but it's serving a good purpose because I stopped using printed backgrounds. This is my junky mouse pad that you probably also saw in the first tutorial and the actual mouse. Uh, the mouse pad is actually from my grandmother but this is me. Check it out. MGF Customs. MGF Customs and Reviews everybody. Pretty, pretty interesting guy, Try, tries his best, um, doesn't always work out. But my pile of random crap just behind him is the little piece of anxiety I get to have next to me at all times. Over here in the far left corner, I've got Smart Hulk and the uh, progress on Thor, or lack thereof. Don't worry, he's gonna be really cool when I do start making some real progress on him. And you can see over here, I've got all these random minifigures, and you can see I've got this makeshift Mandalorian, Moff Gideon, from a skit that I did recently featuring a Phoenix Custom Spider-Man minifigure. Uh, not this one, but actually the one from Far From Home. This is that Satil Sean sculpt that I did from Star Wars The Old Republic for my first sculpting tutorial. Not sure when I'm going to ever finish that figure and actually make the rest of this half custom, but it will happen this year, no doubt. I've got a couple sculpts of Baby Yoda. I'm not actually going to be using this one, but I did use it for a skit recently. This is the one that I'll actually be painting for for my uh, Mando season two showcase. I've got an incredible pad printed custom Taskmaster here that I'm thinking about reviewing soon. I've got some pad printed Spidey customs out. These three are actually all from Phoenix Customs. Gonna be reviewing this guy really soon. Freaking Sam Raimi Spider-Man, then my Spider-Man PS4 custom painted figure that uh, took me a lifetime last year to paint. And as we go even further back here, little Morai bird that I have yet to actually show on the channel, but there it is. So I guess that's a thing that you've seen now. You've got the armorer back here from Tuminio. Never actually gonna make a custom of her myself, but I thought it would be cool to have his. Then Bastilla Sean from Knights of the Old Republic. Really, she needs to be up there, um, but I've got her down here. Then I've got the Iron Patriot cast from Tuminio as well. Not sure when I'm going to customize the Gar Saxon cast. These are absolutely the parts I'll be using for Iron Patriot, as you also probably saw in the first tutorial. These are random Black Series casts and Ahsoka head that I'm never going to use now because Hasbro's actually making a Clone Wars Ahsoka that's coming out really soon. And then Darth Plagueis. And I just recently acquired this cast to make him in the Black Series scale instead, but it's quite a daunting project. These are pretty much all my filers. I use these bigger ones as well, but this is pretty much the rest of them. My small collection of brush on glue. I should probably get rid of these three, but this is currently the one I'm using back here and some Lumiere paint. Up here on my prehistoric external hard drive, I've got Darth Xana and Darth Bane because I just recently listened to all three of the Bane trilogy audiobooks and they were absolutely incredible and I love those characters. So of course, I've got them right next to my laptop and they were actually featured in the Sith Collection video. And I'm sure you noticed them back here on the corner of my desk, a collectible I just recently acquired that I have been waiting since 2014 for Hot Toys to make, Armored Thanos complete with the Infinity Gauntlet, not accurate to Avengers Endgame, but how it always should have been if you ask me. This is the definitive Thanos collectible and it is easily one of the best parts of my whole collection now. 
underneath my desk, I have my incredible cable management skills on display for you. Then I also have a couple of containers of Procreate that I use for sculpting. In these containers, I've got all kinds of official Lego pieces that I'm always pulling from. And there's just pretty much everything and anything in these containers. And then this container is by far the much more interesting one because inside here, I've got just little Ziploc baggies of everything and anything you can imagine pertaining to the work I do with custom minifigures, whether that is an alternative head for my custom Captain America, unused hair pieces that I made in the past that I want to protect, pieces that I'll be using for upcoming Mandalorian minifigures, various lightsaber hilts from eBay sellers, full heavy infantry pads Vizsla cast from Tuminio, my Rise of Skywalker Kylo Ren helmet because I don't display him with it, Firestar Toys Ahsoka heads, half of my original Ben Affleck Batman, Half of my original BVS Cavill Superman. Even full-blown old customs that are just hanging out in here. Down here, I've got all my shipping labels and photo paper. And behind this roll of paper towels, I've got a few extra paints, some Brasso. But over here is an organizer of all of my battle droids and super battle droids and just pretty much my whole collection. But slotting that back into place, you can see I've got this rolling pin that I used to use for sculpting that I don't anymore. My paint rag that you probably saw in my first tutorial, very important to my process. And this is how I store all of my Lego magazines. Pretty much any that I have on me here in the house, they're all right here. And this is my full stack of them. I recently reorganized these chronologically, but I have no idea if they are still in the correct order. Probably not. Right next to me at all times, I've always got my camera bag here and then my phone charger, but my drill is also here plugged in and, and probably a hazard. And I should really unplug it now that I'm looking at it. Um, but this is what I use for carving and, and just drilling in general and sanding and various other uh, modifications that I will cover in future tutorials. Now that my desk and workspace is out of the way though, we're just gonna go from left to right, beginning with my framed Nano Gauntlet poster from the re-release of Avengers Endgame, and then my current collection of Marvel Legends Avengers Endgame figures as well, with the recently added Black Widow. These figures really are pretty amazing though, I mean the likenesses are just always pretty insane. I've got a Metal Age of Ultron thing that my sister got me several years ago. This is what I use to catch ladybugs in the winter, it's, it's pretty much my kit, because uh, it, it's Invasion of the Ladybugs in here after the fall. There is definitely more going on with this corner though, including a ton of Black Series figures that all came out around this time last year when my buddy Corey was here rooming with me, we went to Force Friday to get all of these. Baby Yoda, however, came out earlier this year. Then I've got Morai here for reference, a plushie I got for my sister at Star Wars Celebration Chicago 2019. Underneath this clothes bin, I've got my original Halo Reach Legendary Edition. So many memories attached to that and the game. Then underneath it, I've got the Halo 5 Guardians Legendary Edition. So many bad memories associated with that. Then I'm that guy who collects all of his tickets and puts them in a shadow box. I don't want to talk about it. In front of it, though, I've got some extra stuff from Star Wars Celebration in Chicago, including that signed picture from Sam Witwer. Then in front of that, I've got this Clone Wars poster, an original 2008 Clone Wars poster from Star Wars Celebration 4, back when Ahsoka had yet to be revealed, which is why she's kind of in the shadows back there. These are all the uh, lens wipes that I've been using for the last year and uh, I still have quite a few of the 400. I, I wish I never bought this. Back up top though we have a bunch of original trilogy Black Series figures up there and that whole section in the corner is actually still incomplete. No idea what figures I'm going to eventually put there. Then I've got the Black Series Qui-Gon Jinn who's up here along with the Celebration Chicago exclusive Obi-Wan and Maul in the six inch scale Phantom Menace style packaging. Now we're going to cover this shelf here with a section that is very important to me my collection of all my favorite Halo figures by McFarlane Toys, but these figures are incredibly nostalgic for me and hold an incredible amount of sentimental value for me. When The Clone Wars was airing, Halo was always my number two, and Halo is a huge part of me, just like Star Wars is, and I'm actually really happy they delayed Halo Infinite. You can see back there, I've got my original copies of Halo 3 and the ODST Mythic Disc, which just led to so many great memories when I was a kid on Halo 3's multiplayer. My original copy of Halo Reach is back there as well. This is actually a custom painted Cortana face because the original one was absolutely horrifying. But back here behind 343 Guilty Spark and the Sentinel, I've got to acknowledge the Didact, one of Halo's greatest characters 
fully realized as the main antagonist for Halo 4. So much incredible, deep, and detailed lore in the Forerunner books. And unfortunately, even though he was amazing and stepped from those books onto the screen for the game, they ditched that story because it was too much for people and they killed him in a comic. I kind of forget what used to be on this shelf, but this is my original collection of Suicide Squad Funko Pops. And believe me, I'm aware the Suicide Squad did not pan out as a movie, but there's a reason that they won the Oscar for Best Costumes that year. And it's also why I can't seem to part with these Funko Pops. They're still just so great looking to me. Believe it or not, this art book is actually really great. I mean, and it's also kind of a tribute to some of the best custom minifigures I personally ever made in my customizing career back in 2016. Going further down the shelf, I have what is essentially my Brick Fair mantle. Brick Fair, Virginia, ever since 2010 and all the way up to 2018 were, were just some of the best times of my life as I actually got to meet so many of you and all the creative people that make this community what it is, but in person and see pretty much all of the LEGO community's creativity on display. It, it, it's, I, I can't describe Brick Fair to you. you. You kind of have to watch videos or maybe experience it for yourself. I can't wait to eventually go back though, hopefully next year. This was my badge as I wore it at Brick Fair 2018 with a bunch of printed tiles that you were able to get every other year. And so, of course, the last couple that I got after Civil War were some of my designs for Avengers Infinity War. This is really important to me though. This is a business card from Jackson Wavy Films. One of the best people to not only ever grace this world, but of course the LEGO community. And he passed away last year, March of 2019. And at Brickford 2018, he gave me and uh, several other people these Canadian coins. So um, these always gonna cherish forever. Uh, and then this is the extension of my Brick Fair badge and all of the bricks and tiles that unfortunately I uh, couldn't use anymore because the badge just got too big. And back there was the badge that my family used to wear. To top it all off, this is a custom brick from my buddy Sam DeMar. Um, and it's, it's pretty great and still in pretty good condition for a Sharpie brick. Also, yes, these are my own business cards from 2018. I have yet to update them. And I just have them all there in a holder because whenever I need them, it's just the easiest, most accessible way to just pull from and uh, be able to have those there. <laughs> Behind all of these signed program guides from over the years, I've got what is pretty much my full collection of Captain America Civil War Funko Pops. They are all back there, all the main characters that came out in 2016. Moving further down though, we have the shelf that makes me very sad. The shelf that is my tribute to the DCEU. I fully believed in the DCEU and uh, it seems like things might be on the upswing again with the Snyder Cut being released on HBO Max and Ben Affleck returning to The Flash. I'm not getting my hopes up. I and a few of my friends loved Man of Steel so much and we're so excited for the future of the DCEU that we use Batman versus Superman to travel halfway across the country to visit my friend Joe so we could all see it together. And what we ultimately got was incredible. But as you know, so much has fallen apart and fallen through. So because I never know if the DCEU is actually going to have a proper future with its leading actors, this whole shelf just kind of continues to make me sad but i am still hoping for a better future for dc after the fandom and let's not even talk about how heartbroken the cw left me and so many other people after all those shows started going to complete hell and just became campy poorly written garbage on the bottom we have a lot of random stuff but also a lot of birthday and holiday cards and i just don't know how to properly store them these are brick built grunts and an extra hunter from halo that i used to use for tr legos fans collaborative halo mocks at brick fair they were a ton of fun when we came together and fully assembled all of our sections to make some really cool displays. Then this is my stack of magazines. This was a fad of mine between 2014 and like 16 and I, I regret every second of it, but I don't regret getting the Clone Wars magazines from back in the day. These are absolutely amazing now and you just, you don't get magazines like this anymore, obviously. And I recently pulled all of these out of storage. I mean, they're, they're all still in great condition and just so cool. And you've even got one from the older 
Republic back here, which you'll never see now, obviously. More Obi-Wan, Commander Colt. This is random from the beginning of Lego Marvel superheroes and just so many other gems that are in here. A magazine for Halo from 2010 for Halo Reach. And then I got this one and this one and this one. I mean, these are all pretty special to me now as they come from a pretty good time in my life. Moving on though, now that I have successfully made a mess, I have some random Black Series figures here, including a Sith Trooper that I don't know what to do with, and the old Kanan and Hera, which are now outdated because they were recently re-released with updated face scans. And check out that new Zeb, one of the best Black Series figures ever made. Underneath this whole Black Series wall that I'll show you in a second, I've got the recently released new Clone Commander Wolf 3 and 3 quarter inch vintage collection figure. Absolutely amazing. And this is my organizer. This has been my organizer for years. Any custom piece from any third party seller, whether that's Cape Madness or Aerialite or Tiny Tactical or Amazing Armory who no longer exist, all the custom parts that I pull from to make custom minifigures with, Eclipse Graphics, Clone Army Customs is back there in the corner. I've got all kinds of stuff from Minifig Cat, Brick Forge, Brick Arms. I mean, anything that I need to make a custom minifigure, if it's from any one of those major companies companies in this community, it goes in the organizer. And I've got some really amazing sculpts in here, by the way. And, and I'm really sorry that you have to see this, that I store some of them like this. Um, but just some incredible sculpts are in here and a few that I definitely want you to see that include classic brick affliction sculpts from Halo, Crisis. You have some Star Wars sculpts in there. One from my buddy Andrew A.V. Figures. That's his old First Order Stormtrooper sculpt. Just some incredible stuff in there. But this cast, I really need to keep out of this organizer, actually. This is a Dead Space cast from a guy named Leonardo in this community who I had the pleasure of meeting when he came over here to the U.S. for Brick Fair 2014. Underneath that organizer, though, was this crate from Hasbro from the release of the very limited Rise of Skywalker line. Really not a huge fan of this movie, but it's a cool box that Corey left here after it was sent to him. And inside, I have all kinds of Ziploc bags of official Lego minifigures from basically everything dating back to like 2012. Now these Armored Thanos big figs are not official Lego, but I will be using those for a certain custom in the future. I've got my bag of Avengers Infinity War minifigures and other 2018 minifigs. Just every bag of every set of minifigures from every line of sets, whether I reviewed those sets or not. If I don't need them in any displays, they are in bags and in this crate. But we're swooping back up this wall and over here to the top shelf here to give you a quick look at all of my Force Awakens and Rogue One Black Series figures that are on this wall. I'll let you pause and take a look at any of the ones that you want to see there, but I collected those for the releases of each of those respective movies. And then up here, on the top of this shelf. I forgot to show this section a minute ago. Got a Halo 3 Mark VI bust bank, a few extra Halo 3 figures, security, Hayabusa, and EVA armors, and then the Black Series Archive Boba Fett, which I just recently added to the collection, along with the Sideshow Boba Fett from 2011. Of course, Lego's UCS Slave 1 released in 2015, an ODST drop pod in the back there with an ODST kind of hiding behind the Spartans, and then I've got a couple extra Halo Funko Pops of Buck, the ODST, and Sergeant Johnson. Let me just go ahead and move Thanos really quick to get him out of the way. We're going left to right with the main shelf directly behind my desk, beginning with the pad printed Delta Squad from Clone Army Customs, the Halo Reach Legendary Edition statue, just so important to me. My physical separate showcase for my Rogue One Customs. Valkyrie's hanging out here on her Pegasus, and then I've got a full display case with tons of vaulted custom minifigures dating back from I think like 2015 and before. If I don't want them in a main display but I also don't want them gone, they're in here. Up above that case I have my full Siege of Mandalore display from the recent showcase. These are all minifigures that I am so proud of. Obviously AV Figures and his team contributed to this with their clones and Maul is back there as well with the Shadow collective but over here on the left we've got 
ARC Trooper 5s, also by AV Figures and Commander Fox, as he should be. Behind them, I have a printout of my Avengers Infinity War poster that I designed in 2018. Still so proud of that showcase, so I have to have that there. And of course, Clone Commander Bly, hugely instrumental to the beginning of my YouTube channel. But as we continue to move through the shelf here, you can see I have my YouTube play button, and I'm so glad that it's the original classic play buttons they offer and not those newer flat silver plaque versions. I think those are cool too, but there's just something so classic about this one to me. And I got that in 2015. Then in front of it, again, because of how important Avengers Infinity War was to the channel, I have every single minifigure from that showcase minus Loki. And I want to show this to you guys. This is an improved hairpiece for Black Widow that I never actually showed on the channel. And instead, for some reason, opted for the one that was actually in that video, which Andrew and I both agreed was not the greatest, but that's okay. And of course, my very slowly expanding setup for Avengers Endgame. I am so proud of the four figures I have made and showcased, and I cannot wait to continue the project. But this is actually an armored Thanos from MMC Customs that is absolutely godly and just completely divine. Gonna close my laptop for a minute to give you a better look at some of my favorite pieces of my entire collection. This is the Hot Toys Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Ahsoka are my favorite characters in anything ever, and Ahsoka was just revealed. Hot Toys is going all in on the Clone Wars final season, and they are developing some of the greatest figures that the Star Wars community has ever seen. Captain Rex back here and Commander Cody are from Sideshow from back in the day. This is also the Attack of the Clones Yoda from Hot Toys as well well, but can't miss out on the gentle giant Commander Blybust recently acquired thanks to a heads up also from Corey. And again, because of how instrumental Commander Bly was to the foundations of my customizing career, I had to finally get this piece. All the way over on the right of the shelf is my collector's edition of Star Wars The Old Republic. Now, I love The Old Republic era, but definitely not the game. The MMO was just not for me, but I've got my full collection of Sith minifigures, again, including one of my favorite characters in all of Star Wars, Darth Plague is Higo Damask right there. And if you look closely, there are some new additions that were not actually there in the video. Jace Malcolm is here with a couple Havoc Troopers from the Old Republic. These are some old printed customs from like 2011 and eBay seller made those. This is my recently acquired physical copy of Darth Plague. It's my favorite Star Wars book of all time and just one of the most detailed and incredibly well-written and comprehensive Star Wars experiences you can have. I highly Highly, highly recommend the audiobook if you're a hardcore Star Wars fan. It's so sad to me that this masterpiece is not canon. It fits in seamlessly with the universe still and was written while the Clone Wars was airing, so it has so many connections to that as well. But more importantly, it connects, of course, to the prequels as it covers Palpatine's and Plagueis' entire lives leading up to the Phantom Menace. Speaking of the Phantom Menace, that brings us to the beginning of my Clone Wars shelf, starting off with this Clone Wars Obi-Wan bus bank, but this is my old wounds Darth Maul statue from Sideshow Collectibles. I got this thing back in 2012 when he was first returning to the series, and it is just kind of the ultimate tribute piece to the character. It is absolutely massive, and uh, it's not in the greatest shape but it's always been a huge highlight of my collection back behind there is a photo op from celebration chicago with sam whitworth the voice of maul and that brings us to the rest of my bigger clone wars tribute shelf my frame picture of dave filoni and i in the streets of downtown chicago just after celebration chicago last year a couple of sealed the clone wars figures back there padme and commander fox what remains of my original phase one and animated clone army from when I first started out on YouTube, a Clone Army Customs Commander Devis, and a Commander Bly by Andrew.
Andrew over at AV Figures. And moving along, you can see we also have what remains of my original LEGO Republic fighter tank, my very first and unfortunately heavily modified Republic gunship from when I was a kid when the Clone Wars was first coming out. Up above it is my frame poster of Ahsoka from the final Clone Wars panel, also at Celebration Chicago. Actually got that signed by Ashley Eckstein just after. And it's pizza time. Spider-Man is dangling from the shelf above delivering pizza. Right next to it, also from Celebration Chicago, is the full Clone Wars cast photo op. Definitely a great opportunity that I got to share with some of my very best friends. And that was definitely a huge split second dream come true. Right underneath those, I have a sealed Anakin and Obi-Wan from the second wave of Clone Wars figures for the series all the way back in 2009. This is my original Lego ATTE, obviously also incomplete and another of my classic Clone Wars sets that I really need to repair. Then right below it, I've got the minifigures from it along with a custom kit Fisto with Commander Gree, who I have yet to feature in a video. And back underneath the ATTE, I've got my three Shadow Arf troopers lurking and stealthing in the background. All the way in the left corner, I've got the original Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Ahsoka Clone Wars figures that were released for the very beginning of the series in 2008. And next to them is my second Clone Wars Republic gunship, which is a lot closer to being complete, just missing a few pieces. Then behind it, thanks to my buddy Corey, I've got the traitorous Goldie and holographic General Grievous figures still sealed on the cards. Right above them is my photo op with D. Bradley Baker, also at Celebration Chicago. And as you can see, I got to share that with my good buddy Andrew from AV Figures in his full kit as hard case. And D. Baker, of course, had the helmet there. That was so cool. And then this is a custom designed autograph I brought to James Arnold Taylor at Star Wars Weekends 2013. And I think that that is still really cool featuring some of his iconic roles that I photoshopped in at the time. And I also didn't really have an understanding of how dimensions or borders worked because, uh, yeah, that didn't turn out too great. Moving up from the Clone Wars, though, to my third shelf on this wall, the Marvel shelf, beginning with my Spider-Verse display in the corner here with a few Spider-Man sets, and in front of them, the full Spider-Man team. Now, not only are these figures not up to date, but Noir and Spider-Ham use half knockoff parts. This is a makeshift custom Mary Jane next to Spider-Man 2099 here. That uses a custom hairpiece, a random web piece, just hanging out here. Baby Groot is chilling in the background there and in front of Vulture I've got the Marvel Legends Thanos figure. Now this is easily my favorite Marvel Legends figure of all time. Moving along here, I've got the 2014 Milano by Marcus Besa, the official Lego set. This is the unofficial Groot Big Fig, which I think is really cool though. And next to him is my full Dark Knight trilogy display, featuring a couple official Lego minifigures, a Bane by Christo, but mostly all custom printed figures by Phoenix Customs. This is my full custom printed minifigures base plate. It's incomplete actually missing a few recent additions by Phoenix Customs with his latest Spider-Man releases but that's pretty much all of them and I do have a collection video from earlier in the year which is unfortunately now kind of outdated. The full and complete Disney Collectibles Series 1 and 2 by Lego on some crappy makeshift brick built base plates I set up for them. The knockoff Iron Monger Big Fig with Obadiah Stane. My custom Iron Man Mark 1 from 2018 and then continuing with my little MCU setup here. From Phoenix Customs I have his Captain America from the first Avenger facing off against my makeshift Red Skull with the painted face I did in 2018, a pad printed Peggy Carter I got from Outside Brick, and behind them I have the knockoff Whiplash Big Fig, which is also amazing, kind of simulating that final scene from Iron Man 2 with another knockoff Iron Man here, but this is the official Lego War Machine. Then moving along, I've got my custom Gabriel Luna Ghost Rider from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4 equipped with 
with the Dodge Charger, a modification of the official Lego set, and something I never did a video on, even though I wanted to. Maybe I still will. And finally, knockoff Heimdall is here on the far corner. But that was just the front of the shelf. Moving on to the back, we have my full display of custom builds from Tyler Kleitz, Lego Holic. You probably saw him on the Lego Masters show on Fox, and you can see I've got his Rhino, Igor, and Hulkbuster in this display case from all those huge showcases all those years ago. On top of it, I've got the knockoff big fig of Riot from Venom 2018, my actual custom Venom from 2018, my custom Green Goblin with the glider from 2014, and Coulson is up here in Lola, also from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Down next to it, I've got the original Igor build by Lego Holic from 2013 for Iron Man 3, Lego's Giant Man, and a full wall of Marvel Legends figures years that I've collected from over the years. Thanos is obviously not present in that three pack back there, but to those of you guys who collect Marvel Legends, I'm sure you'll recognize quite a few of these figures. However, I've also got the Hot Toys Captain America from the Avengers 2012 and the Infinity War Iron Spider. Unfortunately, I wrecked the shield on the Captain America because it turns out uh, you shouldn't dust Hot Toys figures with a wet cloth, especially old ones. And just above the Marvel Legends figures, you can see I've got a bunch of stuff here, including the Infinity War 4-pack from LEGO, a War Machine from Iron Man 2, an Age of Ultron Hulk Big Fig, a knockoff Abomination Big Fig, and a Disney Infinity Hulk Buster. So, definitely kind of random. Now let me tell you something, this shit ain't easy. That brings us all the way up to the top shelf now. Right next to it, I've got the Black Series Dr. Afro with her two droids, but this is essentially my random sh shelf. It's got a ton of Funko Pops from various superhero shows that I've come to love over the years, pretty much as the background, and then I'm not really going to go too far into what all of this stuff is, but obviously what's really important here is this guy. Check that out. That was the only thing I bought for Black Friday in like 2018. And then that is a custom build I did of my own Minecraft skin. And there's an ostrich. Also Jedi Master Evan Peel. That brings us to my studio. Finally, this is where I shoot all of my videos. These three photography lights were like a hundred bucks or something and I got them in 2013 and I've been using them ever since and essentially this is where I shoot all my videos, take all my photos and do literally everything in the way of video making and photo making for the channel. This is a random Black Series Ahsoka that I just got in. You can see I've got my Canon 80D here with my Rode video mic on top of it, a blue background for an edit that I was working on today. And then right behind here is my iMac. This was the iMac that I used for literally everything in my entire life between December 2011 and this year until I finally had to get the MacBook Pro. And then this is the tripod I use for filming myself painting and doing all my tutorials. This is my smaller portable tripod that I use for some things. I've had this since 2013 as well. Over here in the corner is the mini big stand that I've been using for all my videos. I think this might also have started in 2013 as well. Like definitely this stack of plates and these slopes all been using for a very long time. And then yeah, these are just assorted custom minifigures of mine from over the years that I was using for how to make custom minifigures episode three. And there are a ton over here as well. Now, welcome to the Coruscant underworld of MGF customs featuring some old last Jedi cardboard cutouts from Kohl's when my sister worked there. We've got a first order stormtrooper back there in the corner from Force Friday 2015 when Toys R Us was a thing. I've got this Funko Pop of Iron Man from Avengers Endgame doing the snap. The freaking crusty crap, baby! And they're all on top of this giant Black Series TIE Fighter that I have had sealed in the box that it was shipped in since like 2015. This is my rotating stand that I use for quite a bit of stuff now actually and I've had this for a couple of years and it really comes in handy. Got that off of Amazon. If you want to see something really cool? This leg was stepped on and broken actually like three years ago so it does this. Watch. Directly underneath my studio is my organizer for random 
including the Lego pieces that I have here, random extra pieces from tons of sets over the years and just other pieces that I never use. Behind that though is my tower of organizers, including all of the printed backgrounds that I printed myself here, dating back to 2016. And behind those are more printed backgrounds, but these are all ones that I had to go and get printed at Office Max from over the years. I mean, this one here, literally grass. You have no idea how hard it was to get this printed the night before Thanksgiving 2018. I don't want to talk about it. Speaking of things I don't want to talk about, this is my knockoff army of Wakandans that I have left directly under my studio right here in this spot since last year. Don't procrastinate, kids. This is my little dog food tray box thing that I've used for various pieces that I could pull from when making videos. I pretty much use these for skits and other stuff. And this box right here is quite literally just a ton of Lego instruction manuals. I have another box like this in storage. It's just literally every instruction manual I've collected for like the last five or so years. Now this guy right here is iconic. This is the box, the Imperial Shuttle Tidarium box that I use to tape up all my backgrounds on. If you've seen any behind the scenes content from me, you've probably seen this box. It has been my backgrounds box since I got it in 2015. Back down here though, we have all all the various pieces that I use for doing things like, again, like skits and other stuff that I might need for photos and videos, and all my clear pieces that I use to hold up minifigures in my photos and videos, and these if I need them, 2x4 bricks, because the beginning of LEGO Star Wars YouTube was built with 2x4 bricks. Lastly though, as you can see, this is my bag of Lego Star Wars minifigures. I don't recommend this, but I've been doing it for years. I've got my prequel bag within the bag. Also within the bag, I've got my Clone Wars bag. And then within the bag, I've got my Clone Wars clones bag. And then I've got my Stormtroopers bag. And then everything else is just original trilogy and Phantom Menace. And these are pretty much all the minifigures that are either not intact or I don't want to display. Next, I've got my bag for all of the Jedi. This is going to be my next collection video as a follow-up to my Sith collection I did earlier this year and finally I've got my superheroes bag now this this is again I, I don't recommend this but I have pretty much just a ton of miscellaneous superhero minifigures in here from Marvel and DC dating back all the way to 2012 when it started bringing you back up from the course on underworld aka my floor I have this fantastic framed artwork of Chadwick Boseman that Marvel posted about a week after his passing and this is something that I put here right under my frame picture of Carrie Fisher because I always want to remember the guy who inspired a whole new generation and suffered through his last four years while changing the world through his art and through his work with the films and the characters he portrayed while never even alluding to what was going on. He was truly a hero and that's why I have this there every day now to remind me of what is possible. Just above that though, I have the posters that I got at Star Wars Celebration Orlando 2017. This was the poster they gave us at the first Last Jedi panel when Ryan Johnson debuted the very first teaser. That was back when we thought it was going to be a great film and then my badge was actually even signed by Ryan Johnson when he came to visit us in the Q Hall at like 1am. And like I said, this is the Carrie Fisher poster that was given to all of us at the end of the 40th anniversary panel. And that panel at Celebration Orlando, I think might be the greatest moment of my life. Being in the room with that many icons, including including George Lucas, Hayden Christensen, Mark Hamill, John Williams, Billy Lord, Harrison Ford. In one hour, it crossed off so many bucket list moments for me and my friends. Then fast forwarding a couple years to the next celebration, Chicago 2019 again. This is my signed Clone Wars poster that I designed for the cast. They were all there signing and I absolutely knew I needed to do this and I'm so glad I did. It's one of my favorite pieces of my collection now and they all finally got to see a bit of my work which was really cool and we also won the panel lottery and we're in the room for the Mandalorian season one panel two and that was a great time right in between that and the Fallen Order panel poster I've got my badge that I wore and I actually wasn't even in the Fallen Order panel that was gifted to me by a really cool fan it's been so long I've lost his name since but my dad and I got to talking with him and his dad a couple times and they were just really really nice and he 
was kind enough to give me not only that poster, but also the extra Mandalorian poster down there. Swinging back over to the left side of my studio though, this is the last section that I have to show you. My Marvel Legends wall featuring all kinds of figures that I have collected dating back to like 2014, I think. And these are all figures that are still sealed in the packaging, aside from those three packs, which I did have to open a little bit to hang up there. And while I don't collect every Marvel Legends figure that comes out, I do get quite a few of them and I keep all my figures sealed so that one day if I ever need to, I can sell them easier. And because I move every few years, it is easier to have them like this instead of needing to essentially pack each one of them up individually. I just drop them into a box or a bin and they're already ready to go. And finally, for real, right above my bed, I have a beat up theatrical Clone Wars poster that my friend Corey also left here when he was rooming with me. It, it was wrecked when he shipped it here. I just figured I would hang it up right there where I had a blank space right above my bed. And then I've got my posters, the 24 by 36 posters for Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. I'm probably going to replace Endgame with the Clone Wars final season one day if I can get that poster as a 24 by 36. And then up top, I've got my Avengers 2012 door poster that we also tacked up there last year. And that is just so cool looking and one of my favorite promotional graphics that I think they ever did for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And that is it. Thank you, God. Thank you, first of all, just so much for sticking around for that whole video. I know that might have been one of the longest collection videos you've ever seen in your entire life. Maybe I'll do another one of these in like six months to a year or something when I've got a lot more cool stuff in and the rooms are rearranged or who the hell knows. 2020 has been wild, but we will see what the 2021 collection room tour video thing will bring. Uh, but if you made it to the end, please let me know because that's really cool. And I really appreciate that. If you actually got all the way here without skipping around, let me know in the comments. But yeah, that is going to do it. Thank you again for watching. Um, be sure to drop this video a like down in the comment down below, uh, just because apparently that appeases YouTube's algorithm. With that though, I will see you guys next time. So stay safe and keep collecting. Take care, bye-bye. Why did I have to make it awkward at the end? Why?